Hello and welcome to Bergen Stages Television, the entertainment magazine here at Bergen Community College where we highlight the performing arts in and around our campus. And today on campus we are in the final stages of putting together our production of the Tony Kushner Pulitzer Prize winning play Angels in America. And we happen to have two of the leading actors from that show with us today, Michael Sconzo and Elizabeth Staywicki. Um, welcome to the show guys. How are you? Yeah, good. How are you guys doing? Great. Good, good. Before we get into talking really the nitty gritties about doing Angels in America, can I have the audience know a little bit more about you guys. Michael, where did you go to school? Uh, I live in Clifton, so I've lived in Clifton for most of my life, so I went through the, um, uh, the public schools there. Uh, and beginning uh, the elementary schools, there's a lot of them. I went to school 13. Mm -hmm. And then for middle schools, there's two, Christopher Columbus and Woodrow Wilson, and I went to Woodrow Wilson. Then everybody goes to Clifton High School. Clifton High, Clifton yes. High. And you and I have worked together on musical. We were in 1940s Radio Hour. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know you like musical theater. Did you do yes. theater while you were at Clifton High? I did, I did. I did um, all the, most of the musicals uh, in, high, in high school. I did, um, my sophomore year, I was in Wizard of Oz. Uh, junior year, I was in South Pacific. And senior year, I was in All Shook Up. Cool, great, mm -hmm. all good show. So yeah. each each year you did something. Mm -hmm. Cool, and Elizabeth, we have not worked together as director no. actor, but we have uh, you were in our uh, last production of uh, uh, Pygmalion. Yes, uh, I was. last season, which was a wonderful production. You yeah. did a great job Thank in the show. You. So tell us a little bit about where did we find you? Where did you come from? I actually came from Hudson County. I live in Kearney. Um, I went to Schuyler School for middle school, and unfortunately, we didn't have theater there, so I didn't start theater till my freshman year of high school, where I was in The Wedding Singer. Sophomore year, I did Les Mis. Uh, wow. Junior year, I did Pippin. I was the leading player in Pippin. Nice. Then senior year, I was in The Odd Couple and Little Shop of Horrors. The female Odd Couple? Yes. The uh, reverse. Oh, cool. Yeah. Great. Great. And Little Shop. Who were you in Little Shop? I was Audrey. Oh, great. Yeah. So great roles. Yeah, yeah wonderful. definitely. Good. And you both are theater majors here at Bergen? Yes. yes. Is that a w your first year, second year? I can't remember. This is my you second year. Are. You're in your second yeah, year. Both of you are in your mm -hmm. second year. Good, good. And any plans of what you're going to do after you finish here, Elizabeth? I'd like to go to NYU. Great. Yeah. Cool. To Tisch? Or yeah, Simon? definitely. Cool. Mm -hmm. Great, great. For pursuing theater or musical theater? Theater. Or, uh, okay, great. Yeah. Good. Great sure. school. Yes. Good, good. Keep working at it. And Mike, what do you, any thoughts? Um, I haven't decided exactly where I want to go yet, but I do want to go somewhere where great theater programs so I can expand what I'm doing here. Continue. Yeah, there's so much that you've learned here, and the classes have been great. Have you? Oh my uh, God, yeah. Yes. yes. What kind of classes do students have to take here on campus for theater? Uh, depends on what uh, program you're in. If you're in a general general theater like I am, mm -hmm. um, you have to take your you know general education courses like you do for any, but then other classes, the acting classes, it's more like the basic ones. There's so the basic acting, everything yes. from like improv, being an animal, to... Yeah. Theater, to, to <laughs> yeah. Good. And history, musical theater. History, Jim musical Bumgarner. theater. Oh, right. <laughs> there you go. So, so you got some history involved in it. Um, scene studies, stage makeup are yeah. some of the classes you... I, I know that I've seen you guys uh, taking and wandering down the halls with, um, going to classes. Yeah. <laughs> great. Good, good. And we have a very active theater club, and both of you are active in the theater club yes. as well. Yes, right? I'm vice Officers, president. vice president. And, and I'm th uh, treasurer. Treasurer. Great, great. Yeah. And that's the first time this is. So you're busy, and you also have the comedy improv, and you also have the vaudeville nights, the theater yeah. club. Yeah. And they're amazing how much money they uh, they raise for Broadway Cares, Equity Fights, AIDS, that which awesome. kind of now ties us into uh, Angels in America at this point. Yeah. So we're yeah. doing <laughs> Angels in America Part 1, Millennium Approaches. Yes. Uh, everybody goes, why aren't you doing the whole thing? It was like, what, nine hours we would be here? <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's enough to do that. So you guys play husband and wife in this show. Yes, uh, how's do. it been working with each other? Because you didn't know each other very well before this. Um, we actually yeah. met in your class last right. semester. And we be quickly became friends after oh, yeah. that. Uh -huh. We get along great mm -hmm. off stage, not so much yeah. on stage. Yeah. <laughs> the husband and wife don't get along, yes. yeah. not the actors. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. And ha and tell us about your parts. Uh, tell us a little bit about your part. I know you don't want to give away any uh, any hidden secrets from the play, but we know it's a, it's not a comedy. Yes, and we know that our audience need to be prepared. That this is a drama. It's it's rated R. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you want to bring children. Only the language is tough. It's adult situation, adult language, oh, yeah. and so. Uh, but that said, your character your characters <laughs> are Mormons. Yes. Uh, coming to New York City, and what is a little background on your character? My character. Uh, Joe Pitt. He comes from Salt Lake City he, with uh, Harper. We moved to New York for uh, my job, so I can expand on that. Uh, I work at, as a uh, chief clerk over in a law firm, mm -hmm. and it's, oh, it's good for me because it's like Joe, what, Joe wants to do it. Um, Joe's also Republican, so he's one of the Republican lawyers. 
which is really fun to play. With Roy Cohn. <laughs> yes, with Roy Cohn, the infamous Roy Cohn. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so he's, he's pretty, seems very clear about where he wants to go in business. It's where he wants to go uh, with his personal life that seems to be the... Yes. Good, so we'll get back to that. So Elizabeth, tell us a little bit about Harper. Harper is wonderful. Mm -hmm. She's crazy. She's a, obviously, Mormon um, housewife, I guess you can call her, who is addicted to Valium mm -hmm. and hallucinates and sees people. And Do we know why she got all hooked on these Valiums? Is there a, a backstory that we that you've created as an actor? That, um, that well, Joe actually has a monologue at some point in the show about how I miscarried. And he says he's not sure if I had started taking the Valium before I miscarried or after. So mm -hmm. I think that may have something to oh, do with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She had a rough childhood. I know that for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. mm -hmm. Wow, wow, wow. So these characters uh, moved to New York. Uh, and Michael's working with Roy Cohn, or, or, or your character works with Roy Cohn, uh, notorious Roy Cohn. And so the, 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 the show is sprinkled with so much real characters and real situations, oh which yeah. make it such a... Uh, uh, an important drama for 1985. Mm -hmm. What have you learned about this period doing the show, Elizabeth? What have I learned about it? About I, this I mean, period. It must yeah. have been so intense just because the show deals with such real issues with <laughs> politics and religion and disease and so much that I, I can't even imagine what it was like living in 1985 mm -hmm. as a homosexual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just being in the city and just trying to figure yeah. out what the, what's yeah. the next step mm -hmm. and all that kind of. And how about you, Michael? Anything pop out that you've learned uh, in this process? Like she said, it's it was really the whole intensity of 1985 of what's going on. It's everything. It's really interesting seeing all the personalities that went on there and how people really didn't know so much about certain things and how people react to that. How naive it's people can be about things like that, too. Mm -hmm. yes. Almost a head in the sand, yes. you know, yeah. um, uh, about issues and then the important things there. They just ignore it, it might go away, yeah. which right. is almost kind of like what Sally Bowles does in Cabaret. If I just ignore it and just keep singing yeah. and doing, <laughs> uh, life will change, yep. and it doesn't. You know, mm -hmm. It takes people to make it change, uh, and, and, and your characters are part of this caught up in this whole uh, uh, tidal uh, wave of what's happening with this yes. uh, during this yeah. particular Absolutely. period. Even though you're fictional characters, uh, you're very real, oh, very absolutely. real. Mm -hmm. So what is the process as an actor, as a performer? What have you, you know, I know you worked closely with, with uh, Tom O'Neill, our director. What has that process been like for you? Tom has been really good. He is a great director. He really knows like how to direct in his own certain way. Mm -hmm. Uh, he spends a lot of time on character development. Yes. And because of our audience might not understand what that is, what, what do you mean by character development? Character development is where the actor t looks on the role that they are given and creates, creates the character for themselves. They make those choices that are not in the script on how someone will say something, someone will react to some uh, situation. Just li the little things that the character would do that you normally wouldn't do. That yeah. might not be even exactly. in the script. So right. you, you want to add it to that? Um, this role has definitely, definitely by far been the most startling role for me as an actor. Um, I've enjoyed it so much though, and Tom is incredible. I've learned so much from Tom. Mm -hmm. I really, truly have. Um, and just character development, moving differently than I might as a person, mm -hmm. saying things differently than I might as a person. Yeah, like a that. lot of people think, well, you're just up there being yourself, and this is obviously no. not. Yeah. And this, doing a drama like this, shows how important it is for the actor to work so closely with the director. And we're going to have Tom on the second half of the show so he can talk about the other side of it, working with you guys. So, um, uh, so it'll be an even match here. But uh, I know that the process has been intense at, at, at times yes. like that yeah. because these you're not a drug addict you no. don't do <laughs> volumes you're not uh gay uh you're not a rep no i'm kidding um <laughs> 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 i don't know which party affiliation um so now we're 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 heading into um um the show which opens yeah. soon so what yeah. happens now what do you guys uh do at this point to get ready for opening what a lot of rehearsal a lot of rehearsal we were there till almost midnight last night um we're back at it at 5 30 this afternoon but just working on running it running it yeah, running acts running. getting notes after acts uh -huh. yeah 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 just keep running it keep making sure you know your lines and just mm. keep basically just polishing 
all the all the uh, scenes right now. And there's a lot of scenes in this play. It's, I think 23. It's, it's almost like 24. a uh, bigger than a musical. I, I mean, it's just because you're going three into acts. different locations mm -hmm. plus three acts. So it, yeah. it it is. It's and I saw it, and it's not. It's long in time, but not emotionally watching it. You mm -hmm. you get so yeah. involved and invested in the show. Yeah. So the, and so it's just a matter of now we get into those technical parts, right? Yeah. yeah. Where the scene changes have to happen. Uh, a lot of costume changes. Yeah. Yes. Probably so because mm -hmm. we go through several months. Several like, months. Like yes. four or five months mm -hmm. uh, that this take place in. Yeah, every few scenes, a different day, a different week. So it's it yeah. going to be consistent uh, uh, costume changes for the main characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and now we're doing part one. Did you have you do you know anything about part two? Have you? I have the DVD. I haven't watched it yet. Don't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. Don't wait. I just <laughs> I think I think because you're creating some really great characters yes. that you don't want to be influenced by the way another actor did it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's some people can work that way, but then you just feel like I'm just being an actor being the actor being the character. Yeah. Right. So you're once removed from what the work you want to do. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. you guys are doing some great stuff on your own. And I think that's what Tom O'Neill works so well on is is, is helping you, you find yeah. these characters Absolutely. there. Good. So so do you think uh, uh, your family will be there? Your family is going to come see the show? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, good. good. Definitely. Oh, good. good. <laughs> sure. um, so when you do the show, Rehearsing with all the other people, how has that been? Because I know you two have worked well with each other because you're husband and wife. How about the whole team? Because that's a huge cast. Yeah. It is a huge Bigger cast. Bigger than normal what is yeah. done. He he took all the individual parts. And, yeah. yeah. I honestly try not to be in the green room a whole lot with everybody just because being that character on stage, it's really hard to just get out of that. Mm -hmm. I can't be in the green room joking around with them and be on stage crying and taking Valium. So you say, so stay, stay focused, yeah. find that character and just Absolutely. be in that moment. You find the same thing, Michael? A little bit, yeah. I'm not so much. I, I do tend to stay in the green room from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, this whole cast is really good. Okay. Yeah, like are. Everybody is really nice. No. There really isn't any animosity between anybody, really. No, not at all. And you really relate with a lot of different characters in the show, but you don't really. You don't have not a lot of you do with Pryor and with Lies yeah. and your husband, but that's pretty much but it. But I don't even really relate to them because they're <laughs> not even real. Yeah. You're in your own, <laughs> <laughs> in your own world. But you do. You you have Roy, you have uh, Louis, uh, so you have different characters. Yeah, that I do. Ha I do uh, yeah, I do interact with a lot of characters. With a lot of different characters, which is, which is different. So. And I think that's kind of it. You know, your character is such an isolated person yes. that that makes sense as, as part of your studying. Mm -hmm. So I know that, uh, I can't believe our time is up, but but you guys are going to do a little scene for us coming up here. Uh, so I really appreciate this. So, so and I'll give a kind of a warm up uh, to, to what this scene is, but I do want to, to, to wish you both great luck with broke, uh, uh, break a leg on opening night. I know you'll be terrific, uh, but I'll catch you after you do the scene. So we're going to let you have a few minutes to prepare while we uh, uh, talk with Tom O'Neill, who's the director of the show. So uh, a teaser coming up. We do have uh, Elizabeth and Michael coming back to do a, a short segment from Angels in America. So stay tuned. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's a line of desks more than four miles long. Keep students in school. Visit BoostUp.org and take the first step. Welcome back to Bergen Stages TV. I'm Jim Bumgardner, your host. Um, we've been talking with a couple of the actors from our production of Angels in America, which is coming up here at Bergen Community College. Uh, and they're getting ready to do a scene for us in just a few minutes. But now, fortunately, I have the director of the production, uh, Tom O'Neill. So welcome to the show, Tom. Thank you, Jim. Um, the, the actors could not have boasted more about the work that you've done with them. Uh, they were so oh. thrilled with this process. Yeah, the feeling is mutual. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's good. And yeah. I know that you're now into those final stages of getting this show mounted, um, but I want to take you back just a little bit to, we started with picking the show, uh, and you're directing the show, so what do you, what does a director do in this process of getting prepared for a production this large and important? You know, first of all, I just have to say thank you for uh, offering this uh, directing uh, assignment, because I've done, I think, four or five shows here. Mm -hmm. And they all seem to be in, in a similar vein. You know, they sort of look at the underbelly of our society. Wow. And for me, I, as a director, I think that's uh, where I like to, you know, sort of delve into it most. Mm -hmm. You know, to just really, uh, along with all the theatrics that are involved, to just take a play such as Angels in America, which is, uh, psychologically and emotionally very rich 
uh, to take it apart. Uh, and as soon as you said, you know, how would you like to do this? It was like, oh my God, yeah, I would like to do this. This is one of those important 20th century Pulitzer Prize winning plays mm -hmm. that, you know, is up there with uh, Glass Menagerie, Death of a Salesman, uh, Long Day's Journey into Night. But it's almost like putting those three together because there's like so many different stories True. intertwined and it's like, yes. I I I which is incredible. So you think yeah. pulling it apart is really f in Totally. Uh, and there are, you know, three main stories, really. There's one of Pryor who is, uh, unfortunately, he's uh, contracted AIDS, mm -hmm. and we believe that he is dying of it. And there is the story of Roy Cohn, who is an actual person mm -hmm. who also is, uh, has contracted AIDS, and he, is, he, he dies of AIDS. Um, and Harper, mm -hmm. who is... <laughs> Happy show here we have here. She's a value <laughs> addict. <laughs> a Mormon value addict. Yeah, a Mormon, no less, yes. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of conflict, inner turmoil. Uh, it, it, I mean, in that sense, for me as a director, it's wonderful because you really get into these characters uh, before you actually even go into auditions. And, you know, uh, you try your best not to project all of your own ideas mm -hmm onto whoever shows up for the auditions because uh, fortunately, as you know, we have an incredibly strong pool of actors in this area. We do. We don't have a conservatory here, but we have a very strong professional program because of the people like yourself mm -hmm. who run it. And consequently, I think the actors who come to us, uh, they, First of all, I think they're just very talented. I've mm -hmm. always been lucky. And I think we've got great high schools around here that, that <coughs> help as well, that, 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 that feed them into us, that have given some training and some background it, to it's us. It's so gotta be, that there's, I know yeah, that, that uh, Fairlawn uh, has a wonderful program, mm -hmm. so. Uh, the, and you know, we have Teen Arts Day here right. on the campus, so and you know, all the kids that come here always show up with such enthusiasm, and I think that's what I saw too, mm -hmm. when I saw the auditions. Uh, so as a director, you kind of know what you want by yeah. reading the play and knowing what these characters are emotionally, and maybe a little bit physically what you're seeing, uh, uh, you hope that that actor walks into the audition. Exactly. So then, yeah. uh, so then we have an auditions, and, and what, did you, what, what does the director do at that point? Well, you know, with this play, typically, uh, traditionally, it's uh, what you would double up on the, on the cast because they, the lead will play, you know, uh, a subordinate part as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. you know, a secondary character. But because there were 18 characters and we had such a large pool, 60 actors showed up, uh, I was able to cast each one of those mm -hmm, roles. Mm -hmm. uh, and you do look for certain things, of course. You know, you look for instincts. You know, is this actor going to be able to go to a certain depth? Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, I mean, I've, I'm always very lucky. And I had three people who showed up who play the, the three main characters who have incredible emotional lives. They're very rich. And I know you know that now through the rehearsal process. Do you challenge that at the audition as well? Do you try to find that depth yes, early on? Yes, I do, mm -hmm. I do. I, I had a couple of actresses who were very strong in terms of being able to play the main character, which I was like, oh, I got two. Mm -hmm, <laughs> I was mm -hmm. so lucky. And in fact, if you remember, I asked you to come in. To sit and watch. Just to, you know, so I could check mm -hmm. and see, are you seeing the same things I am? Mm -hmm. And you did. Uh, so we really had, you know, uh, some, you know, strong performances uh, coming out of the actors themselves. And uh, they actually, uh, I think uh, I, I lucked out and I was able to cast both of them in different roles. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're both very strong actors. And Which is incredible because you come into this thing going, what if nobody... What if I only have exactly. 10 people show up? Yeah. You just don't know. And to have well over 60 people yeah. uh, at the audition. And, and you know, you have different experiences and different levels of acting, sure, too. Yeah. So, you know, you have people who have never acted before. I have a few people. But that's what we're here for, mm -hmm. mainly, I think. And, you know, of course, we want, you know, the show to be as wonderful as it can be. And that's so important because the director here is not just a director. A director is a teacher. And you're still, yeah. it's, uh, you're yeah. having an acting class. You're doing basic acting. You're doing improv acting. You're doing all these things. So you're not just a right. director. And a lot of people don't realize that you're still, uh, you know, that, that watch And for me as a director, that, that's, that's the fun of it, too. It really is. Being in the learning mm -hmm. process. So, uh, you know, you just don't have a seasoned actor who knows exactly what they're doing. And all you have to do is sit back and say, yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's more about exploring the whole process. And yeah. then on top of that, this period of history, 1985, you've had to right. 
feed these guys weren't born then. They weren't even Most thought of, of being born. Most of them were not born then. <laughs> yeah. So you've had to, yeah. to really get into the history of it? We did. I mean, they do know a lot about that period. But uh, as you know, I mean, living through it, it was something that you can only really experience, you know, the kind of alienation, I think, that mm -hmm. a lot of people felt during that time period uh, because there wasn't anything really known about AIDS at that, at that time mm -hmm. uh, except that it, you know, had... Uh, really been a plague on the uh, gay community right and you know that was still a community as we find out in the play that did not have a lot of power so that didn't right. have a lot of influence mm -hmm. in this you know uh, 1980 sort of uh, it, it was a cold period mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. the, the Cold War was coming to an end and uh, people were sort of feeling a little isolated yeah, I think yeah, you know yeah. and there was there were a lot of homeless people on the street in New York. It was a completely different scene. And so Tony Kushner really captures that. He does. That, he that does. part of life. Yeah. Yeah. Not my favorite period of history of what no, went on. But no. Yeah. But yeah. I think it's seminal in what we now, fortunately, the freedoms I think that we're starting to see mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. I think Tony Kushner himself had some influence on that. I mm -hmm. think this is. Uh, it, it is one of the plays of the 20th century that really, I think, influenced the culture. Uh, and, you know. and, the, and the power that a group can do that yeah. you said was uh, uh, the gay community that really had no leadership. Exactly. Just kind of yeah. uh, suddenly found power. He and talks I think that about the politics, you know, mm -hmm. in the 80s it was very clear it was right and left. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if you were part of the right wing, you were in power. If you were part of the left wing, mm -hmm. you had no power at that so time. So sit back and wait. Yeah, yeah sort yeah. of. And he, you know, I think he clearly delineates all of that and defines it very well. And he, he talks about America actually in a very beautiful way, too, mm -hmm. you know, in that it is a potential that is always happening all the time. Mm -hmm. And that freedom, you know, is something that we strive for every day. He says in the rabbi, mm -hmm. you know, that this is something that you sort of recreate every day, mm -hmm. what you're parents and your grandparents brought to this country as immigrants, you know, we have to kind of reinvent it all the time. And that's I a beautiful I thought. I, mean I think he says it yeah, beautifully. Yeah, yeah. I really do. And this is part of the themes that you say we've talked yes. uh, uh, off camera yeah. a little bit uh, about, about at the end of the play, and one of them is this. Uh, are there more that you are trying to uh, make sure that the audience yeah. leaves knowing or feeling? Is there? Well, I, you know, I'm thinking of the character of Roy Cohn because he you know, in history is a very strong person. I mean, he literally says that I've forced my way into history, and he did, mm -hmm. probably for all the wrong reasons, but uh, I think America is also about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know that, you know, we are ready to kind of forgive some of those types of Crimes. I'm going to go that far mm -hmm. to say, right? But right, right. Uh, especially, you know, you go back to the Rosenbergs and all the, you know, yes. that he was so much a part of it. Exactly. Well. Thank um, you. Yeah, uh, that's uh, that's what he was part of. So he, then you he, kind of look his karma. Part of this is like, is our forgiveness truly. going? You know what karma got him uh, yeah. in the long run? Um, is, I think yeah. a little bit of that. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, so there's freedom and there's forgiveness. Uh, I think there's, you know, a desire on all of our parts all the time to, like, look for the humor in a situation and try to rise above it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very strong theme here And I think well. you found that throughout the show, too. We find these, these moments to lighten up a little bit because it could yeah. be a sledgehammer. Right. Uh, but it doesn't. And, 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 and I think you've even found it in the end of the play, uh, uh, just watching the rehearsal. Now, I, I know we've yeah. got some uh, a couple of weeks to go, but, right. but the fact is I think you're finding... Um, some lightness yeah. in all of this heaviness. Yeah. Yeah. I think the cast will be surprised when the audience uh, starts to catch some of the humor, and, uh -huh. you know, uh, which is good. Uh -huh. That's a good thing. I think it adds to the energy. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we've got a couple more weeks. Um, yeah. You're finishing the set. Uh, you and yeah. uh, uh, Michael Appoint are, are working right. on the set. Uh, Marie Natalie's is doing Incredible costumes, costumes again. Yeah. So many costumes for so many people. As always. We have Dean Matson on, on sound. But right. you're also adding a video aspect. I don't want to give yeah. that much away, but there's right. something we don't do a lot of here, which is going to be very uh, yeah, enjoyable. Yeah, I thought, you know, originally, like, there might be a way to put it into context, the 1980s. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that I thought 
to do that is to use projections. Which and so we do, uh, we've taken some risks, I would say. Cool, and but media is so important. I and, think and so. Images and I media so. are what, what we think of, yeah. you know, magazines, glossy magazines. It's, it's part you know, of who we were during it, that period. And, and today, this generation, yeah. I think, is really sort of attuned mm -hmm. to that sort of thing. And I think you're right. I think what you've done, uh, and you're, the audience is going to be able to see this, is that you've, you've made it reaches to today's audience, uh, even though this was written in 1993? 93. Yeah, 93. Yeah. Um, uh, if 20 years later you found a way to make it, and I think you've I done that so. visually. Yeah. I think you've taken with it these visual elements there. We did take a look last night at all the elements, mm -hmm. and uh, I think visually it will, it has the potential to be really stunning, the lighting. John Ehrenberg is, is the lighting designer, right, right, right. and uh, he always brings a nice subtlety to, and this is, this is sort of a dark play, so you know, it's lit in a dark way, but you have to be able to see the actors. So, you know, he does great things with light. Cool. And cool. I, I saw last night that we have the potential to really paint some beautiful pictures. Great. Yeah. And it is going to be a beautiful picture. As I was saying to the uh, audience earlier that um, this is a, 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 a tough show for young kids, so I, I, yeah. I, I invite them not to bring their young kids. No, um, I wouldn't bring my young yeah. kid. Yeah. So we are going to have our two actors coming back and oh doing a scene from it. I uh, can't but wait. I do want to thank Tom for being a part of the today's show. Uh, uh, Tom O'Neill's director for Angels in America, Part One: Millennium Approaches, uh, showing at the Sacone Theater. Uh, Tom, thank you again for being here. You guys stay tuned because we're going to have a special treat, having our two actors, Michael Sconzo and Elizabeth Staywicky, doing a, a short scene from Angels in America. Come right back. Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed today. Learn how at ready.gov. Welcome back. To wrap up today's show, we have two of the leading actors from Angels in America doing a scene from the show, Elizabeth Staywicki and Michael Sconzo. They're going to be doing a little scene from As Husband and Wife, Joe and Harper Pitt. So guys, the stage is yours. Washington? It's an incredible honor, buddy. We I have to think. Of course. Say no. You just said you were going to think about it. But I don't want to move to Washington. Well, I do. It's a giant cemetery. Huge white graves and mausoleums everywhere. We could live in Maryland or Georgetown. We're happy here. That's not really true, buddy. Well, happy enough. Pretend happy. That's better than nothing. I think it's time to make some changes, Harper. No changes? Why? I have been chief clerk for four years. I make $29,000 a year. That's ridiculous. I graduated fourth in my class, and I make less than anybody I know. And, and I'm tired of being a clerk. I want to go where something good is happening. Nothing good happens in Washington. We'll forget church teachings and buy furniture at, at Conrad's and become yuppies. I have too much to do here. Like what? I have to finish painting the bedroom. You've been painting in there for over a year. No, I... But this isn't done because I never get time to finish it. That doesn't make any sense. You have all the time in the world. You could do what I'm at work. I'm afraid to go in there alone. Afraid of what? I heard someone in there. Metal scraping on the wall. A man with a knife, maybe. No one's in there, Harper. Not now. Not this morning, either. How do you know? You were at work this morning. There's something creepy about this place. Remember Rosemary's baby? Rosemary's baby? Our apartment looked like that one. Wasn't that apartment in Brooklyn? No, it was... Well, it looked like this. It did. Then let's move. Georgetown's worse. The Exorcist was in Georgetown. The devil. Everywhere you turn, huh, buddy? Yeah. Everywhere. How many pills today, buddy? None. One. Three. Only three. Thanks, guys. Two exciting performances you will see in our production of Angels in America coming up. Please get tickets.
Michael Sconzo, Elizabeth Stay Weekly, break a leg, have a great opening night, and come and see our show, and come back and see Bergen Stages TV. Thank you.